I hope you have your paints ready. You need to get them wet and get your brushes out. You'll need a pencil today. As you can see, we are going to paint a cactus. Isn't he cute? I love cactus, cacti. So when you're doing your research, pull up, look at as many cacti as you can. The one we're gonna paint today is gonna have a little bit of uh, fl a flower on it. I'm just gonna go through and show you a few pictures just to give, give you some inspiration. Uh, I'm hoping that you'll see the colors on these cactus. You can pick what color you want. You have choices to make. Here's a painting of, of a, somebody that did a group of cactus, cacti. Um, little fuzzy, they're prickly. If you think about what they feel like, think about where you've seen them. Do they take a lot of water? Do they soak up water once a month? Where do they live? Where's their home? The succulents are also very beautiful, but today we're gonna paint a cactus. We will do a succulus another time. Give me a thumbs up if you're here with me. I'm practicing, I'll put the thumbs up for myself. Uh, let me know if you are here and if you're interested in painting a cacti um, or a cactus. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Uh, I usually start with a little bit of drawing, but first let's date our drawing. 3, 14, 23. And um, I'd like to just practice drawing a little bit. If you want to draw with me, it, it would be nice to try to keep it simple and um, not too difficult. So don't, don't get into the crazy drawing part. So I'm looking at this small picture. I'm just sketching it out. I'm also doing it a little bit hard, which I don't want you to do when you do yours. Don't draw it hard. Look at my va my pot is bigger than the pot I'm looking at, but um, it's okay. It's gonna be your pot. You can make it as big or little as you want. And as I'm sketching it, I'm, I'm making it dark. I think I said this, I don't want you to do it dark because you may not want your, uh, the pencil lines to show. And if it's too dark, if you notice when you press in the, um, in the paper, it definitely makes a dent. So you, you don't really want to do that. I'm using a, this is a uh, watercolor book. It is a, um, like a five by seven, 30 sheets. It's um, an acid-free book and it's 140 pound. So I enjoy keeping this book. And as I didn't show you last week because it was taped down, but if you do this book, then you're gonna have all these collection. You'll have a nice little collection when we're done. So 30 days of painting, you'll have 30 or sometimes uh, 35 or 40 because sometimes I paint on both. But I have next week's lesson prepared. We're gonna paint a bunny. And um, yeah, so anyway, draw your pot. I have to turn it a little. I'm trying to make it easy for you to see. Then what I see are segments in this cactus. So I'm gonna look at the outside shape and just draw in the outside shape. I'm, I'm figuring where it is from this side to this side. I've made mine a little fatter, but that's my choice. I can do that. I'm still looking at the picture as a reference. Let me see if this light helps. No. There we go. Too much. All right. I'm still looking at the picture as a reference. Excuse me for just a minute. I'm going to turn this shade shut because I think it's too bright. Nice and bright in Michigan today. What's the weather like where you are? Just pop it in the chat so let me know you're here. Tell me what the weather's like. I'm really excited about this. Okay. Then I see that edge is here. And then I see this is a little bit uh, more more fat so it's like a stripe it's almost like when you draw a pumpkin 
coming like it has the segments and then i notice that there are several points and i'm just gonna put a little pencil line actually i'm double looking at it the points are in the middle of this segment so they're right here smack dab in the middle And then they're on the side. So while we're, there's some points on the top, we're looking at it. What color are those points? What do we notice? Where is the sunlight coming from on this painting? If you want to give yourself some, a clue, just write a little arrow in the corner and that'll help you say okay the sun's coming from this side so it will remind you as you're uh, painting i'm painting straight up i see for you it's straight up and down but for me i'm looking at it this way and i can see straight up and down it's a little crooked here that's fine again it's your painting but i'm gonna take the time to just st stretch straighten this out one of my students cindy she told me about this eraser um it's Marie's and it's an excellent eraser because as you noticed, I erased and I didn't have a lot of eraser marks on my paper. I could easily brush it off. Sometimes I will have a paintbrush, a hockey brush, and I can brush off the eraser mark when I'm using the hockey brush. Also, we're going to determine what size brush we want to paint with because my paintings it's the size of this page, but it's a five by seven. It's small. Here's the lighting. I want to use a brush that is not going to take too much water, but if it were a bigger piece of paper, I would use a much bigger brush. So this is this. I'm going to compare the two sizes. Again, my numbers are not on my brushes. They've worn off. That might happen to you. So get to know your brushes the way the sizes that they work. This is a six. Uh, it tends to be my favorite size brush. Let's look at this one. This one I'm probably going to use for detail. This is a three, so it's a little skinnier. Some brushes are fatter and hold more water, and some have a nice point that will help you. Um, yeah, put something in the comment, guys. Tell me you're here. Tell me you're enjoying this. Tell me what you want to learn. If you want to paint something, go ahead and pop it in there for me so I'm ready. You, you know I'm going to reiterate that we're going to paint a bunny next week, but today we're doing a cactus. So I've got my little brush holder over here where I keep my pencil and my brushes. Um, I'm dipping in the water, just on a nice simple little drawing. I know my, my lighting is on this side, so I know that when I'm looking at the picture, it's, the color is going to be darker in here because this is the dots are coming towards us. So that'll be darker on the inside of the cactus. But before I do that, I'm just observing and I'm looking. And every time I look, I look up and I see something different. So that was the first thing I saw is uh, the where the shadow shadows are. So we can take a minute. I'm going to push this out of the way a little bit and decide what colors we want to use. I have the words Mars Brown written down here, but to be honest, I really wanted a terracotta look on the vase. So I'm going to put a um, Indian red. Mars Brown works as well. And, and Mars Brown is the same as a Van Dyke Brown. And then I use sap green a lot. If you don't have a sap green, you can use any green that you have. It's just a middle green. You, you're going to want an emerald green, which is really sap green, and then you add some blue to it. So you can make like an emerald green. Any blues you want to use. This is really fun. It's personal. You get to do what you want to do. So now I'm going to make an emerald green blue. I kind of like that, a blue green. And then I, I have lilac, but for all those pictures of the cactus that I showed at the beginning, you can go back and... Um, choose what color you want. So I think I'm just going to go with a rose matter, which I think is really pretty. So I'm going to have to cross out that word lilac. And the reason why I take the time to write all this down, and I want you to take the time to write it down, is so that when you want to go back and paint it again, you'll know what colors you used. 
and um, I, this is going to be like your little journal and your little dictionary and you can write in this you can do whatever you want in this um, I chose terracotta so it's not a Mars Brown again I did change that when I chose Indian red and again please don't don't be stuck on colors pick colors that you have that are in your in your color palette and colors that you like it it's there's no wrong wrong here you could even go totally offshoot some some of the people in my class we just do like like blues for what's supposed to be red and we do purples what's supposed to be brown so be creative play have fun there's nothing there's no wrong way um i have gotten that wet and i took a minute talking so i let it soak in a little bit that's perfectly fine i'm going to use that sap green dirty water I'm cleaning off my brush with the dirty water and then I rinse it in the clean water, wipe it on my towel. And I'm gonna go ahead, let's let's grab this sap green or your lighter green. Let's go ahead and put the base color, the underpainting of our cactus. I hope I gave, I, saw, I see some of you are just joining in, so I hope I gave you enough time to catch up. And if, if you don't, don't worry. I know you'll be able to watch this again, but I love that you're here. Give me a comment, give me a thumbs up. Let me know you're here. Tell me your thoughts. I've tried to look for it if I can see it on my own page. Um, yeah, tell me what's, yeah, there I see you now. Yay. I think, oh, there we go. It is a little bit delay. Sorry, Mary Lou. I also had a hard time getting on today. I had a meeting just before, so. Feel free, join in, it's okay, you're not late. I love having you. Um, Laura, yay, you made it. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, um, it says bring you on the video. I'm not sure what that means, but I'm bringing you on. Um, and then Terry, hi Terry. Oh my gosh, Terry, I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for being here. Uh, I love it. And I don't know if that means you can come on to Zoom with me. Let's try it. This is new. This is ex ex exciting, I think. I love this. I'm so happy you're all here. Thank you. Means a lot to me. Really shows me a lot of support. Okay, let's keep going. That is semi drying, which is great. And remember, I decided to use the Indian red. So I am also going to just put a whoops. And I say whoops because I wanted to put a light coat down first. So I love when whoops happen because now you can learn from it as I do always when you have a mistake there are ways you can handle it I'm gonna grab my water and I really do want to use this color so I'm just gonna get it wet this is also a fun effect to ex experiment with um, oh Laura I'm so sorry you don't have your paints with you do you that would be so cool so happy to see you she's sitting on a um, on a train in Montana oh but Kind of exciting look out the window take a picture for us put it in the comments so we can enjoy montana with you okay so i put more paint down i'm just going to drag this around because i'd like it a light underpainting and if you notice it's lighter on this side because that's my arrow that's where the the light is it's the light part of the canvas so i'm picking up also a little bit Take your paper towel and pick up more if you'd like. If you use paper towel, you can get the the rub the effect, the texture from the paper towel onto your piece. You might love that. If you don't want any texture, you might just use toilet paper. Toilet paper will pick it up and not give you much texture. Okay, so um, it's oh, it's too rocky to take a picture. <laughs> Oh, Laura, I'm so sorry. I, I know you were planning on being home sooner. Okay, so now let's look at the painting again and let's look at that base since we're there and this one is still a little bit damp. Grab some more of your Indian Red and I see the darkest is right here in the center. So I'm just tapping it into the center of my painting. And then I'm going to get it wet on both sides and let it drag out a little bit. But I want that dark to be in the center and a little more darker on this side. 
and I don't know if you notice, it's dark in the center and then there's dark here and I mean, it gets darker on this side and then there's a little bit of reflective light. There's a little bit of light that's just, just almost the color of the vase itself. So, or the, yeah, vase. I'm gonna pull out some color there. And the way I pulled it out was just got my brush wet, uh, sorry, dried and then pull out, rub down that row and pull that color out. Now, I also think it's kind of fun. I see a shadow. I'm gonna actually soften that up. I, I want it more color in the middle, but I don't want it to look like I just left the paint sitting there, not, not touched. Okay, so I, what I was gonna say is I like to have some fun. I do see a shadow in there and to put the shadow, just look at it, take a minute. It's really dark right under a real dark line right under the vase, but notice how that shadow goes out. And logically, um, I said the light is coming from this side. It is coming from this side, but it's also coming at it from here. So the shadow is going back this way. So if the shadow was coming directly from behind or this side, the, the um, the light was coming from behind or this side, then the shadow would be down this way. But for right now, it's off in the picture I'm looking at, my resource that I'm looking at, it's off to the side here. So I'm gonna give it a little base and then pull it off and just leave it. it. It can blend in later. We'll play with the background. I think we'll have enough time today to play with some background. This is kind of drying, so I'm gonna clean it up by grabbing some of the um, paint that's there and really, and this is watercolor paper. So if you're on your watercolor paper book, you should have be able to do this. We use a, a mixed media book in my class and that's our practice. So we would normally just practice this and then we would go to our page and do our final copy. Then we have a little bit of practice in, a little more knowledge before we do our final painting. So if you notice, what I'm doing is taking the tip of my brush and grabbing some color that's there and just playing, just kind of lightly scrumbling it down in and rubbing it into the paper. And that's what was giving me my conversation about the paper. Watercolor will let you do that a little more. Our practice mixed media book, it doesn't let you play too much. Notice how I'm leaving some white space there, literally not even touching that with color. If it bothers me later, I can always go back in and spread the color and you can too. Sometimes it's good to leave the white space and then you can play with it a little later. If you don't like it, if it looks too white, then just go ahead and grab some color and play. Now we're gonna grab that um, emerald green that we made. We took sap green and we put a little bit of blue in it. If you have emerald green, that's fine. Or if you have a darker green that you like, a hunter green is oh so yummy but i wanted to teach you how to make emerald green so now i took the emerald green and i just made a little pile over at the side of my uh palette here and i think next week i'll have a palette that i can mix these colors in with you so that you can see what how i'm mixing it putting it on the tip and i know that it's darker in the center so i'm gonna go ahead and just put some color almost like draw it in lightly. I've got my pinky on the on the um, paper and it's giving me some balance. I'm, I'm elbows high. So I almost like drew it on. And to be honest, you could stop there. It would be like a Pablo Picasso or you could stop there and you can even outline the edges. Let's do that just for the hay. You can even go ahead and outline your edges but I wanted to challenge us a little bit today. First of all, I think that looks very cool. It's very fun. And you will start noticing everybody has a style and you get to decide what your style is. So um, this is a style, I love it. It's very cool, but I'd like to go, go in and dig a little deeper and I'd like to soften those lines up. Before it gets too dry, I'm gonna take some water and I'm just like, I'd like you to just tap, tap, tap tap with the water and notice how it bleeds a little and the paint follows the water. I, I'm not feeling the whole area, just a little tap, tap, tap on this line here. 
and I'm going to do the same on this side. I just tapping that line just a little tap, tap, tap. If you have any questions or if you want to know something, please let me know. I put my phone right here so I can kind of see it and, and talk. Um, Laura, if I'm missing something, I love your help. I love when you uh, paint with me. I miss you. So feel free to, to jump in. Uh, I, I invited Judy uh, to come today, but she has a, um, an appointment that she had to go to. So anybody who's interested in joining me live with, with the, these paintings, please, please, please DM me. I will send you the link. I'd love to have you join. It's really fun. The more the merrier. We have a nice community at Art Yourself Studio. So uh, we share information. Okay, so I'm going to let that rest for just a little bit. Uh, I see those little spark, spark lines and we can add those sparks in several ways. We can take that thinner brush that I said I might uh, line with it. Now I know, and you know, looking at this painting, those, I'm calling them sparks, sparks, but they're really the prickers of the cactus. Uh, I'm gonna, they're yellow. And because we're painting in watercolor, you really have to paint the light first. And I think that this is, this. we can still get the same effect. This is a artist's choice. We can still get the same effect with painting with a really light, brown um oh Teresa I'm so happy you're here good I'm glad you start painting with us I know you're supposed to be working but go ahead and <laughs> grab your paints I'm sure they're right there any case uh thank you all for being here I really love your support um I'm gonna take so instead of a, a yellow because it really won't show up on the watercolor paper the uh in watercolor it does show up if you do acrylic or oil you can paint light. You actually need to paint the light on top to get your depth and your values. But for for watercolor, we, we can't. So I'm going to just take a nice thin little brush and I'm using any brown that you have. I also, I have a set of Cronacridome browns, like a Daniel Smith Cronacridome. And I just love, I love his uh, colors and I love how rich they are. And I don't get paid by him, I'm not endorsed, but I really do enjoy how, the richness of his paints. Um, so here we go. I'm just gonna paint those little spikes in right now. Look how cute. It's, this part's wet. So I'm getting a little bit of bleed. That's okay. You can dry it off if you want. You don't have to, it's okay. Dry it off let it bleed let it add some depth definition and texture to your painting uh, i'm looking up every time i look up i see something different uh, or more so i'm now grabbing a little more green i see right down here it's pretty dark so i'm just tapping in the dark shades here we could be picky and we could even add there's like little divots in here as well um it if that's what you see and that's what you want to put in yours, you can. Sometimes I like to just paint simple. Uh, I, I, the longer I stare at it, the more fun I have with adding details. But for this one, I really wanted it to just be simple. You notice there would be a shadow here if the light was over on this side. So some of these little divots would be a shadow. Okay, so now let's add the fun part. I'm going to go back to that picture. Let me take a minute to find it here. Oh, look at all these colors. All right, so I, I'm using this picture. I usually go to uh, the internet, Google, and get my pictures. If I'm going to, I, I will not copy directly from a picture, and I, I encourage you not to. Uh, if I'm going to use a picture, I make sure I get it from a free site that allows me to use it. Now this one is, I'm not copying this at all. I'm just using it for inspiration. And I hope you decide what flower you're gonna put on your cactus. And then I can't wait, please. All you have to do is go to the comments and then pop in your picture. So you know how you write to me in your comments and I love that you guys are writing. I really appreciate it and love that you're here. I'm gonna put a little thumbs up there. So if you can see it in my comment, in the comment section, you can press on it and then you press on your photo and you can add your picture to it. So that's how you do it. Pick your favorite color, pick a big flower. I'm looking around with my mouse. I hope it's not too distracting. And just pick one of these colors and make 
a nice flower, little flower. It's a hint. It doesn't have to be exact. I have here rose matter so that I decided already the color I was going to pick. And this is it. We're just going to put, I'm, I'm picking any of those flowers, any one. I'm going to come off to this side and just press and smush. Press and smush. Press and smush. And to be honest, I wanted more oomph. So I'm going to put, can you guess by now? You know, we've been painting together three or four, four times, I think. How many? Well, I could go back and count. I don't know. But any case, I love Opera Rose. Look at how bright that is. I'm just going to put a little tip on top of each one of these points for that Opera Rose. And there we go. That's the painting. That's all we have. There you go. Simple. Please, please, please have fun and share with me the one of the questions from last week. I have a thing on Thursdays on Facebook that asks ask Ginny and I posted a couple questions. One of the questions was, is when do you know when to stop or how do you know when to stop? I definitely tend to play and want to work more and spend more time on my paintings just because I like it and I want to dig in. But I would suggest my recommendation was stop here. Let it just live in your uh, in your book for a little bit come back and visit it the next day and if you say oh it's missing something then then please go ahead and, and paint it in but it's better to stop less is more and stop early and then play with it paint this three or four times please be sure to post it here in this link and this uh, video so that we all can see it and thank you all so much for being with me today i'm really so thankful and i appreciate you all being a part of my community i hope that uh, these lessons just make you feel good that's that's my um drive for doing these if you want to learn more and you would like to uh, book a call with me we'll have a coaching call if you just DM or write in the thing you'd like to learn more, I will send you the link to book a co coaching call with me and I will help you with any of your, um, I'm seeing my reflections in my glasses, so I'm having a hard time, seeing, but I will help you with any of your painting questions or any topics that you like to paint. Um, doesn't have to always be watercolor, it can be another topic. So bye for now. Thanks for being here, friends. It's going to take me a minute to figure out where the stop button is but um thanks so much for being here i love i love that you've painted a cactus you've not done it before please do more pa paint all these wouldn't that be so cool i love the terracotta pot too and the pots are all different shapes and sizes so enjoy thank you for being here and we'll see you next week we're gonna do a bunny